Last year, something really cool happened that kind of got overlooked by most of the watch media. One of the best micro brands out there, Hemel, teamed up with heritage Swiss brand Maffei Tissot to bring back a truly legendary chronograph, the Type 20. But best of all, unlike the modern Breguet, this collab version might just be the best value mechanical chronograph under $2,000 currently for sale at the time of recording this video. But is it any good? And what is a Type 20? Let's find out. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. I'll quickly get the uh, wristwatch check out of the way. I'm wearing my Tudor Submariner on a Jubilee bracelet, that lovely jingly jangly Jubilee. <laughs> uh, no particular strap today. Oh, and by the way, before we get into this, uh, please don't forget to like this video. It's the best way to support the channel. If you wanna see more free, independent, unbiased reviews like this. Right, let's get on with it with a little bit of history first to help contextualize. The Type 20 gets its name from a specification set by the French Ministry of Defence to equip their pilots during the 1950s. Around seven brands that we know of were hired to produce this watch officially. They were Breguet, Airain, Aricoste, Dodain, Maffei Tissot, Selvia Chrono Fixe and Vixa. The last brand Vixa was actually part of German reparation payments to France as it was in fact Hanhart that produced the chronographs under the Vixa name. Speaking of Hanhart, despite being issued to the French military, the design was deeply rooted in the German Second World War chronographs that were made by Hanhart, Tutima, Glashuta and others for the Luftwaffe pilots. The first to do so and most important being Hanhart, Germany's most prestigious chronograph specialist who basically defined all the features and characteristics that we see in many of the Type 20s. But they did that 20 years earlier with their military watches of the 1930s. To find out more about that, I recommend checking out my review of their outstanding flyback chronographs from last year. As for Maffei Tissot and Hemmel, the former is a Swiss heritage brand that goes all the way back to 1886 and was in the original seven we just mentioned earlier. The latter is one of the best micro brands based in NYC, covered on this channel multiple times. Maffei Tissot is not to be confused with the slightly older Tissot brand, it's just a common surname shared by the founders of each brand. This brand had a long tradition of making high-end complications such as minute repeaters during the pocket watch age, before switching production to military timepieces during the advent of the first wristwatches. Then unfortunately, succumbing to the deleterious effects of the quartz crisis in the 1970s. They are a shell of their former selves, producing disappointingly unimaginative homages of other brands, and no longer any of their own proprietary movements either. Hemmel, on the other hand, is a small, young, independent and dynamic micro brand that started around the same time as this very channel. So Hemmel's founder, Marvin, comes from a New York design background and you can really tell uh, he's a good uh, friend of mine, ti saluto amico mio, uh, but there's a consistent design language across all his creations. They are always classically elegant with a kind of purity of form and function with a deep military watch inspiration. Today's watch is no exception. And another thing they all have in common, they are always very competitive and affordable. As you would expect, we have a stainless steel case with a beautifully pronounced double domed sapphire glass with AR coating. The size and scale is very close to period correct. The originals were mostly in 37 or 38 millimeters and thus it wears extremely comfortably on my six and a half inch wrist. Normally I don't talk about a watch's packaging but this comes in a beautifully stunning wooden box with aviation themed etchings depicting romantic images of the late propeller and early jet age. 
of the late 1950s and into the 1960s. It's a classy and fitting tribute to this historic collaboration. Inside the box you'll find an extra bunt style leather strap, which we will return to later on. In terms of low light legibility, this takes full advantage of the modern Superluminova C9, giving excellent orientation, thanks to those large Arabics, with effectively precise syringe hands that really reach those hash marks that are in crisp snow white print, contrasting nicely to the matte grain of the black dial itself. Framing the glass is an unratcheted, friction-based bi-directional bezel to keep track of a second time zone in a 12-hour scale, also with half-hour engraved markings that are then black ink filled. The bezel just has the right amount of resistance via a pleasingly ergonomic coin edge. Its feel and motion is very similar to my Hanhart. Incidentally, the brand that first introduced this feature to pilot chronographs during the 1930s that we mentioned earlier albeit in a far more rudimentary form to track elapsed hours. As for the movement, we get the same SW510MBHB manual wind solita that we have seen many times in this price range. Based on the venerable cam and clutch actuated Valju 7750, but with the rotor removed and the power reserve boosted to 63 hours and not the 48 of before with the automatic. We get a respectable high 28,800 vibrations an hour with hacking and an interesting point to note here is the original French Air Force Type 20 specification required the watch to be accurate to no more or less than plus or minus 8 seconds over a 24 hour period back in the 1950s. Celita do not state the accuracy on their website but I did find it to be well within the original Type 20 specification thankfully. So the undecorated utilitarian movement is behind this scalloped edge uh, screw down case back. If we flip it over and look at the crown, it's oversized again, like the originals, but very effective. I actually quite enjoy winding this one. Really solid feeling as well. The water resistance, uh, considering all the points of entry, you know, with the pushes, etc., those piston head pushes, it's 50 meters, which for a watch of this style, of this genre, absolutely fine. Of course, I would have preferred 100, but perfectly adequate all the same. Like the design language of most mil-spec watches, my non-civilian combat-issued Hamilton field watch being a perfect example, the Type 20 is built to specifications that very much dictate its design, along with what it should be able to achieve performance-wise. However, unlike the German, British and US military, the French mil-spec was let's say, a little looser in its adherence, resulting in many different combinations of bezels, markings, dial layouts, complications and sizes. It's a deep rabbit hole to fall into, with many variations throughout the seven brands, and some even unbranded too, to further muddy the story. The most iconic and common design was the inclusion of a 30-minute register at the 3 o'clock, made slightly larger than the adjacent subseconds at the 9, in a bi-compact formation, giving these the nickname Big Eye Chronographs. We see the same here, with the Guilherme concentric patterned registers, along with the cut-off numerals only on the left to make way for it, and a loomed sub-seconds hand. The mainly high-polished case has brushed sides, and this came much later, mainly with Breguet, but the curves, shapes of the lugs, and font stylings are all distinctly and quintessentially 1950s in style. So one of the coolest aspects about this collaboration is, well, the styling is predominantly inspired by the most common Type 20s, which I think were mainly the Breguet ones. They're, of course, the most famous, right? Breguet, obviously. They've gone for that Breguet style of high-polished bezel, the shape of the lugs, etc., etc. What is really interesting, historically, Breguet actually subcontracted a lot of the production of the, sub, uh, of the uh, Type 20s to Mathe Tissot. So you can never call this a homage and it brings a level of authenticity because imagine if it was just a Hemel watch, then, well, it would be a, a homage, but because it's co-branded, you got that historic connection. So it's a legitimate Type 20, very, very cool and a smart move by Hemel as well. We are definitely in the age of elegant, dressy tool watches. This would be right at home next to Amiga Speedies, the Glycine Airman, 
and brightening navy timers of that age. Double branding automatically makes me think of Squale when they made cases for other brands during the same era too. Marvin has gone one step further to differentiate this by adding the French Civil Aviation logo towards the center, an ode to some of the rarest vintage examples, and a nice touch linking it back to some of the most desired civilian originals. A typical signature of the Hemel brand is the use of vivid orange to reflect Marvin's own Dutch heritage. That has been spared to leave it completely monochromatic, however we do see it being used in a more affordable quartz version. My biggest issue with this watch is not actually Mathe Tissot or Hemmel's fault. In fact, most Type 20s have this problem. As somebody who actually uses the chronograph function in the watches I own, the 30 minute registers are a little tricky to read. Without numerals, the 30 minutes is split into groups of five minutes indicated by the larger of the markings. And fine, I can work with that. But then that is subdivided into increments, but not into individual minutes. And ultimately that always confuses me. Now, I'm not sure if it's just my dyslexic brain or if that's for a specific reason, maybe related to aviation. If anybody knows, please do share that in the comments. Functionally speaking, this has made me really appreciate my other favorite chronographs like the Navitimer, the multiple Dan Henrys I own, and of course the Seiko Flightmaster, etc. I also just prefer chronos capable of recording 60 minutes or more. It is just more practical and useful for stuff like cooking, cardio, phone calls, etc. Now, I mentioned earlier I'd return to the strap, and it does feel a little cheap, to be honest. It's not the worst quality by far. I'm sure we're all well aware of the horrendous offerings at the entry level of Seiko. It's nowhere near that bad. And while they do look the part, and Marvin has done a great job of picking the right distressed textures and chocolate brown colors, but I am rather spoiled when it comes to this kind of thing with the quality I'm used to from all the offerings I typically buy from Holbens. The quality just falls short in comparison to that. So one of my pet peeves is when straps don't taper enough. It tapers a little bit, but then the buckle I think is oversized. It's a bit clumsy. I'm really nitpicking here, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just not a fan. I'm not really a fan of these straps, but then again, you know, for not very much money, you can buy a wrist candy watch club, nylon strap, bung it on there, and it looks amazing. It, this would look just as good on, let's say an olive green, you know, it would give it more of a military feel and less dressy, but then dress it up on a crocodile leather strap all the same. And then you've got a dress watch, it has the same versatility as classics like Speedies and Daytonas. Well, Daytonas on the nylon strap. I don't know, does that work? I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys think? But yeah, I would have preferred a smaller buckle. However, this is not the end of the world. Buy a German handmade Fluconiza suede leather strap from Holbens in any color for around 40 bucks or a luxury Italian collar rib and you will be uttering the words pure class to yourself every time you check your watch. And this segues nicely into a great point. This definitely falls under the urban gentry trademark phrase of being an utter strap monster. It's very difficult to clash any color with this monochromatic color scheme. Lastly, the height is a bit of an issue. I do wish it was a smidgen thinner. The previously reviewed Nevada Grenchen Chronomaster got their case down to 13.75 millimeters with the same movement inside and even managing to keep the higher water resistance. So it's certainly possible. Speaking of the movement, Disappointingly, there still is a ghost date position. Despite the overall quality being on point for the asking price, this lack of refinement does detract from that. Well, aside from modern materials and updating it in that regard, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. And I said in my predictions video for this year and beyond that the vintage inspired trend is getting a little old hat. I mean, how many watches are we gonna reissue from the 40s and 50s and 60s, etc.? That is why I'm getting more excited and, and more into reviewing watches that are completely new. And that was some of the thinking behind the Range Master. What would an Explorer field watch from the future look like, let's say from the Starship <laughs> Troopers universe, you know? Every time I review a watch, there is typically one aspect that stands head and shoulders above the rest that ultimately makes the watch compelling. In the last review of the Alpina, 
it was the impressive quality for the money. With my Universal Genève white shadow, it was the trailblazing design and mechanics that inspired Patek and so many others afterwards. Or with the Seiko Flighty, it was the sheer multitude of functionality that it offers. So what is the best thing about today's watch? Well, ultimately, this non-limited edition Capo Lavoro offers amazing value. So let's put it into context where it fits in. Mechanical chronographs are invariably expensive due to the nature of them being so inherently complex. For around $500, it's difficult to beat the Chinese-made seagull movements found in Hemmel's entry-level offerings. But what about Swiss-made? Well, Longines has a vintage-inspired big-eye chrono of their own with a column wheel-based movement, but even though it is absolutely fantastic, it starts off at about 3K. Then you have Hamilton and Tissot and their equivalent vintage and military-inspired chronos that start off around 2000 and upwards. Breguet themselves brought back their Type 20 in 1995, and since then it has evolved into a luxury chrono with less and less resemblance to the purity of its military roots along with a five-digit price tag. Even Mathe Tissot offer their own flyback modern reissues too, at a glance look identical to the Hemmel collaboration, but that is almost $8,000 and consistently sold out. So ultimately it's a less predictable choice than your go-to iconic chronographs like your Speedy, your Daytona, your uh, Navi timer. It's one of those under the radar icons that really is only known by enthusiasts. Uh, because if you know what a Type 20 is, you, you are definitely into watches, not just military watches, but you must be really into watches. And the, the great thing is that the, the plot twist, it's done in collaboration with the makers of the original at the most affordable price, minus the quartz ones, obviously, for a mechanical Type 20. Unbeatable, pure class, what can I say? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What do you make of the Type 20? What would you like to see from Hemel and Math 80 so uh, do share that as well. Oh, and don't forget to like this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Onwards and upwards. Ciao.